They searched for hours. I just knew they were gonna find him. And they did. I was raised in church. I was very active. Um, we went every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Teen Tuesday, Wednesday. Any singing they could possibly take me to on a Saturday. My dad was a preacher. We were very involved. I was 16 years old and I was on the phone one night and I had a call on call waiting. It was late, so I took it and it was my brother and he yells, let me talk to mom. I'm like, wow, why do you wanna to talk to mom for? I think dad just drowned. I took the phone to mom and I started praying. Please let my dad be safe. Please let him be down the bank somewhere. Mom went to the lake to meet the search and rescue team. My boyfriend, now husband, came to the house and he took me to the lake all the way there. I just thought, he's gotta be safe. Lord, please let him be safe. Um, my pastor met me at the bank and he told me that they found him. He was, de he was dead. I screamed. They were holding me up. I could not believe that my dad had just died. There is no word for the despair and the anger that I felt. How could a God that I loved so much take my dad away from me? I told everyone I didn't want to go to church because I didn't want to see the spot where my dad stood because it made me too sad. When the real reason was I was just resentful of God. I finally went back one Sunday morning and I was sitting in my class and all the kids and the teens were just staring at me like I really didn't belong there. And I just burst out into tears. My teacher came and said, what's wrong? I'm like everyone's staring at me like I don't belong here. And she responded, well, it's been several weeks since you've been here. I was just done. I quit praying. I questioned God's existence. I got married when I was 19. I had my first daughter when I was 22. I started thinking that church would probably be a good idea because I wanted someone else's voice in her head, not just mine, to keep her out of trouble. So I started visiting off and on, never staying anywhere very long. My husband didn't attend with me when I did go, so I always felt singled out. I was the mom at church with the kids, and my husband wouldn't come with me always felt awkward. I would look around for my justification as to why I didn't need God. I would see people that were going to church struggle and have their problems. And I'd be like, yep, yeah, at church, that's working good for you, isn't it? I would compare my life to theirs. I was so vindictive. I got real joy out of seeing other people go through bad things when I had determined that I thought they probably deserved it. I mean, really, what kind of person does that? Terrible person. I was lonely. It was depressing. Life wasn't going easy. I made it seem that way to everybody else because I wanted them to think I was doing better than they were. I felt hopeless. My life was a constant battle and I wasn't winning. One of my friends had been coming to Watts Bar and had told me about a situation and some peace they were realizing from it. And my first thought was, I could really use some peace. So I told her maybe I would come with her the next Sunday just to check things out. So I packed up the kids and off to church we went. The people at Watts Bar were so warm. They greeted us kindly. The music was on point. The message was awesome. At one point, PK said, Jesus loved me where I was, but he loved me too much to let me stay there. It sent me home thinking. I went home and told my husband about this church and I thought he would really enjoy the music. So I convinced him to come with me the next Sunday. And surprisingly enough, he did. And he went with me the next Sunday and the next Sunday and several Sundays after that. 
Heather asked me to go with her on Wednesday nights for the book study with the girls with swords. There were days when I just couldn't read that book. It just trudged on. It made me question everything that I'd been thinking for the last several years, and I kept repeating in my head, I'm just so unworthy. I don't understand why God would love me so much that he would do all this stuff for me. Then one Wednesday, there was this quote, and it said that Satan wasn't attacking me for who I am. He's attacking the possibility of who I could be. I started thinking, like, all these years where I've been angry and I've been fighting and I've been battling, maybe all that was for a purpose because I wasn't doing anything wrong in my mind. I didn't understand it. That was the game changer for me. He was scared about who I could be. I am so far from where I need to be, and every day is a journey. But I have learned that mercy feels better than vindication. I have joy and peace where there was once anger and bitterness. I know I don't have to be lonely. God's with me wherever I'm at, even when I'm angry. I have hope again. My name is Elizabeth Stockton, and this is my story.